Hey guys, today I'm reacting to Geography Now, Germany. Yeah, Deutschland. So, should be pretty interesting. Yeah, my knowledge of Germany, it's like in Western Europe. Uh, it's pretty centrally located. Uh, you know, geography is destiny. Um, had not many natural disasters. Lots of like regions that are sort of called like I think Bundeslager or like you know states in English, federal states in English, something like that. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of stereotypes come from Bavaria, I know, but there's other regions like uh, North Rhine Westphalia. Um, I think Berlin is also a state, yeah, yeah Berlin is also a state. Hamburg, um, I think Bremen as well, and Hesse, and oh yeah, there's, there's lots of states of course, and so yeah, it's pretty interesting, all things considered, they speak of course German, specifically I guess Hochdeutsch, um, yeah, let's get started. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those uh -huh. are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. One gummy bear? Bavarian stereotypes mostly, huh? I mean, you know, a lot of the reason it comes from Bavaria is because American soldiers kind of were in Bavaria. <laughs> so that's where a lot of the stereotypes they got came from. They were in that region, they were stationed there, so after they came back, the word kind of got spread. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So, we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level 1, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries. Don't forget little Luxembourg, a small <laughs> coast on the North and Baltic seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundesland. Yep. Bundeslander, each with- A uh, Bundesla, Bundeslanda. <laughs> I said Bundeslaga. <laughs> Bundeslanda, okay. Its own constitution, three Slava. of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbon Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by by Switzerland, however, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every hmm. state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights. Yeah, the Holy Roman Empire was not holy, not Roman, and not an empire. <laughs> Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon. And Prussia kind of united Germany. Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism. Chad Napoleon. Surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also- Too bad about the Prussians, though. Another Baltic language. It's they kind of wiped out. <laughs> so keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest. <laughs> Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends. Treaty of Versailles. 
A lot of German descended people in the US, though, of course, but they lose you know. land. Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally we get the Germany we have today. East Germany, consisting of these states, is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country, as you can still see. Yeah, they're less religious. The Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half, and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany, only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, oh, yeah. Berlin, Tegel, Western Germany. Uh, you know, very popping economically. <laughs> good, uh, economic, uh, yeah, a good economy in, in Western Germany. Ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin oh, Victory damn. Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind oh, the yeah. Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any like other country that. in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no but I heard the way they, uh, it kind of gets messed up is because they're always doing construction on it. I wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods. Kind of sounds like Egypt, actually everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Suchspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland, and after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley due to its position sandwiched between the arctic blasts oh, of scandinavia and the moist warm jet streams of the mediterranean below germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer there are more tornadoes on average in germany than any other country in europe speaking of flat oh farmland, damn germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer germans abso freak with that being said though i think germany still needs more nuclear power absolutely love their bread there are over 300 different german bread fantastic stuff right there german bread amazing so many varieties Although a lot of it is industrially produced nowadays, unfortunately, but still a lot of really good bread. Kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Yeah, brötchen. Good Nine. stuff. Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They German bread, S tier. Basically, know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, Holladen, Sauerbraten, Schweinsachse, and at a big party, you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic. Even their president has no problem with public intoxication. And Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which, by the way, follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about. Th with that being said, craft beer in the US is better. <laughs> 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 cool. can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously, and for the past two decades has been going on a... But they need more nuclear power. I mean, they were pushing against nuclear power, but you know. And they were defunding nuclear power, unfortunately major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen it. But still France and Sweden get more, you know, efficient I get more green energy, I'm pretty sure, so. Surgeons in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous. The most famous one being the Black Forest. Oh, yeah. Black Forest. In Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of, like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch. Adidas! Mm -hmm. Puma! Adidas! Puma! Oh, yeah, it's kind of like the whole biscoito bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. 
Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a oh, family, yeah. <laughs> Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Africans and Americans. Also, they use the euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany experiences oh, that, yeah. a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government-subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now when it comes to language things get a little tricky each and I heard that Switzerland uh, and Japan are sometimes idolized for their efficiency compared to Germany but yeah I mean Germany is still pretty efficient but uh, Switzerland's pretty efficient though and Japan of course yeah they kind of has their own type of German however to get by most oh, yeah, yeah. learn how to speak Hochdeutsch or High German which is the standard dialect the European Charter however protects the minority languages of Frisian Danish Romani Sorbian which is like a Slavic based language used along the Czech Polish border and Plattdeutsch or Low German which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world in terms of regional distinctions though Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas Rhineland East and Middle Deutschland North Deutschland Baden-Württemberg and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the Bayern. west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and cool Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized perpetuated stereotype Stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, half timber, beer houses, and yeah, Kuku very For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of, I mean, everyone still perpetuates a stereotype. <laughs> Stereotypes. Some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, <laughs> Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss, and in- I had a lot of people just say Tschüss though, like- Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound Ayus, words that get really I like long that. and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungs, Überwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. I also know, I think, Sarus and Moin. <laughs> this is because many words are mertudig or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder, or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased. I mean, the Marshall Plan was pretty, help was pretty helpful, yeah. I mean, Germany used the money that uh, the US kind of pumped in pretty efficiently, so I mean, at the end of the day, props to them.
yeah. increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10, when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money, and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. Oh, One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of oh, like, uh, YouTube it's comment it's section. Weird, <laughs> it's kind of how things are. You comment down below. Monster. They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, oh, yeah. Carl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American. Johannes and also Kepler, Swiss, yeah. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can Damn. kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. But, you know, regardless, I mean, Albert Einstein, if he was Swiss, German, or American, smart person, you know, did, uh, Pretty revolutionary things. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification they were like woohoo even better and germany is to south korea what japan is to france they love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures especially in the automotive industry many south koreans were both pretty germany efficient as well war to work abroad and study and germans have been growing in fascination with visiting south korea the u.s efficient is probably the closest ally yeah. outside of the eu about 30 percent of americans claim german heritage and after world war ii the marshall plan allowed the u.s to give post-war aid to germany which helped kickstart the economic yeah. recovery germany was a key figure in the formation of the state of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented Unfortunately, as yeah. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland. East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries. The Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France. And the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful, flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, all the Germanic people that. existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something Good about stuff. the Germans. And with that, final Respect boss to the Germans. Complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. Let's check out the flag. Oh, is this on? Yes, it is. Hey, Jogger peeps, welcome back to Flag Friday. So, little disclaimer, I'm gonna start using Flag Friday as kind of like a platform to address the mistakes I made in the country episodes. 
Okay, so in the Germany episode, I misspelled Wirtschaftswunder, and technically it's not completely illegal to own Nazi memorabilia in Germany. I believe it's illegal to sell it or produce and print Mein Kampf, but it's not illegal to like own it. I'm not sure, you Germans have a lot of weird laws. Also, I believe Beethoven was actually born in a German city, not Belgian, but there was somebody who was Belgian on his family. I don't, it's confusing. I think there are a few more things, but that, those were like the biggest ones. We're here to cover the German flag. Now, this is gonna be a little hard because there's a lot of backstory and it's gonna be really confusing Using, and I might even probably get a few things wrong with this, but I'm gonna try my best. All right, so without further ado. Ah, Germany. Don't make them get all Wirtschaftswunder on you or else you'll end up Weggangenheitsbewaltigung. So anyway, the flag. The flag is a horizontal tricolor of black, red, and gold. Remember, it's gold, not yellow. And that's where the animation is gonna have to stop because technically there isn't an official symbolic interpretation of the colors of the German flag. And a lot of people will disagree on where exactly the colors are derived from. Here's what we do know. Sometimes the colors are referred to as the Weimar Republic colors, named after the Weimar Republic, which took over the country after World War I and was first adopted as a national flag in 1919. However, that wasn't the first time the flag appeared in German history. The first time it appeared was actually in the 19th century during the 1948 revolutions or the March revolutions in which pan-Germanism was just starting to develop in its early stages as the Holy Roman Empire was dissolving and all that Napoleon stuff was going on. It was kind of like an on and off used flag until the German Empire came and used the black, white, red configuration. Some people say that the black and white colors were derived from the Teutonic Order in which they used black crosses on white fields to identify themselves, whereas the Holy Roman Empire used a white cross on a red field so they kind of very thin. Felt compelled to kind of like mesh those three colors together. But how did the gold come into play? Here are some of the most prominent theories. Back in the day, most of what is Germany today lied in the Holy Roman Empire, which funny enough had nothing to do with Romans. And the flag for the empire was a yellow banner with a black... Yeah, because Eastern Rome still existed. Rome, you know. The Byzantines as we called them, on, you know, which is kind of a revisionist kind of fake name, but you know, they existed, so... Eastern Rome only fell in 1452 or something like that, I think. Yeah, 1450-something. Black Eagle sporting a red beak and... That is an amazing flag. I wish that was the flag. That's fucking epic as hell. Oh, man. I mean, honestly, no offense. The, tr the tricolor is a little bit boring. I mean, Germans... Germany's colors aren't that bad, you know? It's a little bit more unique, but still. Tricolors... You know, tricolor flags are a little bit boy. Maybe if they had that like symbol on the on the tricolor flag, it'd be pretty cool. But yeah. Talons. Okay, fair enough. However, some people will say that it's also inspired from the uniforms of the Lutzel Free Corps, a militaristic group of volunteers who fought against Napoleon in the 1800s as they wore black uniforms with red trims and gold buttons. However, it's also said that in 1919, the three colors were attributed to the three main political parties, the Democratic, the Centralist, and the Republican parties of Germany. However, many vexillologists might say that in the long... Yeah, vexillologists, study of flags. Yeah, epic. I like flags. The red might be derived from the Hanseatic League, which was like a commercial confederation on the north shores of Germany and other North and Baltic Sea states in the 14th century, whereas the black and gold are most likely probably attributed. That is an amazing flag. Whole oh, man. ...to the Austrian Empire, as the Austrians were kind of seen as like Germans back then. I don't know. You guys decide what story you like. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, this flag was... I mean, just no offense, the flag is a little bit boring. Not not bad though, but it's a little bit boring. It's actually the flag of both East and West Germany for about 10 years until East Germany was like, hmm, we gotta kind of set ourselves apart and distinguish ourselves from West Germany. So they put an emblem in... I mean, an emblem really makes it nice, honestly. <laughs> I wish I wish there was an emblem on the current Their flag. Their flag, and then they finally reunited in the 90s. Speaking of which, that brings us to the coat of arms. Now I know... They should put that on the flag. What you're thinking, oh, it looks just like the Holy Roman Empire flag. Yeah, good eye, good eye. That's where it's kind of derived from. But there's a lot of backstory behind that too. The symbol of the eagle goes way back, like Roman times way back. The Aquila or the eagle was a prominent image used in various Roman symbols. After a while, the Byzantines mm -hmm. adopted it, but it was like a double-headed eagle at the time. Then in the 13th century with the Holy Roman Empire, Frederick II granted the Imperial Eagle on a golden shield to his state. Of course, over the years, variations of these images a little bit copyrightish. <laughs> evolved over time. Of course, Nazi Germany kind of screwed things up, but essentially the Imperial Eagle stayed throughout the ages, except in East Germany when they became their own state. For about 35 years, they used the hammer and compass on a circular emblem emblazoned by compass. Of <laughs> on each side nice. with the German tricolor banner below. Fun side note, East Germany almost used a black, red, white configuration flag and West Germany almost considered using a Nordic cross pattern. Wouldn't that be kind of interesting if Germany actually ended up with this flag? Well, that was a boatload of information that 
Interesting. I am trying really hard right now to pretend like I completely understand myself, but deep down inside, I'm actually secretly very blank. This has been Flag <laughs> Friday. You've just been flagged. Stay cool. Stay tuned. All right, that was that was pretty cool. All things considered. Hey, Javik. Oh. All right, let's check out some of the comments from uh the the geography now, Germany. Um, <laughs> Germany as no humor. <laughs> Germany as no humor. That's the biggest lie I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, of course they have humor. <laughs> Video in a foreign language about Germany. All Germans. <laughs> Everyone, much love from. <laughs> Can we just appreciate the fact that he tried to pronounce all the German words? <laughs> there was only one true division. Aldi Nord und Aldi Sud. I have to go with Aldi Nord, I think. Yeah, and I think they own Trader Joe's as well. Although, hmm. I mean, I like Aldi, so I, I don't know. What, whoever owns the Aldis in the US, let's see. Hmm. Yep, okay. Internationally. Oh, okay, this is a nice chart. For the US? Oh, it's Aldi Sud, okay. Yep, okay, then I prefer Aldi Sud then, actually. <laughs> yeah, because I love Aldi, so yeah. Aldi Sud it is. I like Aldi Sud. <laughs> Like, I, don't get me wrong, I like Trader Joe's, but I prefer Haldi's. So yeah, I prefer Haldi's suit. <laughs> uh, Germany, we feel bad about our past. Japan, you still want an apology? Maybe later. Here's some more anime and games, though. Love to Germany from Persia slash Iran. The Saarland is like the German Alabama. <laughs> You know you live in Germany when you drive five minutes over to the next town and they have a completely different dialect. <laughs> I love Germany. Great culture and literature. Rich history. Amazing landscapes. I've traveled to Germany maybe 20 times, but I can still look forward to visiting again. Yeah, I've heard there's a lot of Italian people, not Italian descended people in Germany. Yeah, um... Pretty cool stuff all considered. 99% German comments, 1% others. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The flag thing is so true. I'm feeling weird when I see a German flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love you, Germany from Japan. <laughs> and add uh, the types of bread. Us Germans, we love our broad site. <laughs> yeah, man, I love fucking bread so yes it's good stuff <laughs> yeah okay this was a fun video respect to germany and the germans yeah this was pretty fun so if you enjoyed my reaction make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel